All righty. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome into the Film Guy Network here on a Monday afternoon. We have a tremendous film study for you guys today. Obviously, Georgia throttled Ole Miss on Saturday. 52-14, uh, I believe, was the final score of that football game. Uh, got a tremendous film study for you guys today. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up button, like, subscribe, and rate, and review, and all that good stuff. We have a goal here. I don't know if it's going to be 20 or 25,000. I want to reach some type of subscriber milestone by the end of the year. So the only way I can get you to help me out on that is to make sure you're subscribed and make sure you're telling your friends all that good stuff. Uh, I thought this was sheer, utter domination from Georgia's offensive line and offense in general. Like, they were not going to be stopped on Saturday. They could have scored 80 if they wanted to. Uh, and I, I was texting, I tweeted about this. I was texting and calling or talking back and forth with some Ole Miss uh, folks this morning. Carson Beck didn't get touched on Saturday. Not a pressure, not a sack. I don't even think they hit him on a scramble uh, when, he, when he dove down and fell on the ground. So a completely flawless performance from Georgia's offensive line uh, and had a, a, a tremendous game on the ground as well. Averaged 10 yards per play did this Georgia offense. Uh, I know a lot of people were wondering, hey, what were the adjustments? How did Georgia's defense come out after giving up two scores on the first three possessions and then change things? They didn't really change a whole bunch, right? There wasn't no major uh, difference. They didn't change uh, uh, schematics or, you know, methodologies or anything like that. To be 100% honest with you, they just started playing a little bit better. The, the, the two scoring drives, the three drives that ended up on the north end uh, or, or the, the positive side of the field for Ole Miss to start the football game, a lot of those were due to a couple of explosives that just weren't there the rest of the football game. Hey, make sure you're liking, subscribing. We got a saying around here, let's shut up and let's grind. The tape. All right, we're going to start on the defensive side of the football. Okay, look, every every game, understand something, Georgia fans. You guys know this by now because y'all be tweeting about mans and, and y'all are hella critical, okay, and as you should be. Teams are going to start hunting six, and it's not just because it's just six, right? It's because this guy's so good, too. They're not going to throw at number th uh, three very often. They're going to uh, attack and, and focus most of their attacks on uh, number six. So you got to kind of expect that as a defense. Now, here's what I will say. Watch number 22. They're running heavy play action right here is Ole Miss. So they're going to put the ball in the belly of the back. I want you to watch the first two steps from Javon Bullard right here. Oh, also quick shout out um, to my man Q Banks. As y'all can see, we got some dope new artwork here in the studio. Um, that is the famous Jalen Carter play. I have my man's Twitter feed uh, and his website. This is available as are our posters from the uh, athletic collection as well. And shout outs to prize picks. Okay, shouts out to everybody right here. But mainly today, I want to give a shout out to my man Banks Art. Okay, you can get a copy of this at banksart.bigcartel.com. Make sure you go show him some love today. Let's get back to the film study. Here we go. Uh, yeah, the, the first two steps is what I'm talking. Boom, right there you see 22 float into your picture. That's not what we want, right? We got to, you know, we got to pay attention. As soon as the play action happens, we got to start getting back uh, to our assignments there, 22. So, yeah, probably should have given up an explosive right there to start the football game, but you don't, okay? You don't. And a lot of it's because the pocket's not as clean as humanly possible, right? Dart's platform isn't completely comfortable, okay? Overthrows it just a tad bit. But as corners, when we think we got safety help, man, or help, man come on. Right? If the safety bites down on play action, that's just as much on, two, on 22 as it is on 6 if 22 is responsible for half the field. Now, if they're running cover 3 or if they're running some type of one-man high or one high man, then, yeah, definitely on 6. Right? But either way, no, it doesn't matter, man. You're going to get hunted at that matchup just because they don't want to go with the other guys. Because watch this stuff, man. Look, hey, 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 we finna get, we finna get some type of uh, toss action our way. How? How's he know? I don't know. I sat here all night last night trying to figure it out and all night this morning. What is he looking at? Okay, and then he looks down. What does he see? What does Tyke Smith see to know, hey, they're about to run toss crack this way. They're fitting to run uh, toss screen this way. Is it the way the, the, the wide receiver was looking at him? Was it the eyes of the, the running back? I don't know. But again, you can't tell me this type of anticipation doesn't impact the results of the football play because that, that's what it is, right? We're trying to guess and anticipate with knowledge what the opposition is trying to do to us. And then, boom, we meet the guy at the line of scrimmage. Well, no shit. We knew from the moment before the play started what was about to happen. You know what I'm saying? This type of film study, this type of anticipation, this type of intelligence, it really, really impacts what's going on on the field. And then we got the other version of this. We got 33, the Freakazoid. Okay, this guy right here, this guy right here probably runs 4.56, 4.58, maybe 4.62. Okay, does Taki Smith. 
This dude right here might run 438 the day he goes to the NFL combine. There were day, there were plays on Saturday, this being one of them, where ain't nobody on the planet covering more ground than number 33. Come on, HDMI, pop back up for me. Come on, I need that. I need that. Come on. Um, you know what I'm saying? This dude plays like a rocket ship, man. Watch him. As soon as he keys and engages, he is downhill and gone. All right? This uh, this third and 14 right here, what happens here? Let's see here. Oh, yeah, hey, either close or cover number th uh, 11. Watch, watch J1 Walker right here in the middle linebacker position, okay? They're almost double. They're not almost. They are double spying, okay? They're sending 33 and Jalen Walker as this secondary kind of rush package right here at secondary rush level. Now, here's the deal, 11, okay? Either rush the quarterback now or cover the running back out of the backfield. But either way, we can't not close ground, right? Either way, we can't not close ground. We're kind of in no man's land right there. Either do one or the other and do so quickly. We'll see Jalen Walker, or excuse me, we'll see Smile Mondon in a couple of snaps do a, a tremendous job of exactly that here in just a second. Now, we told you all week last week, got to play four downs against this football team. I didn't necessarily expect it on their own 35 with their left tackle limping down to the line of scrimmage. That being said, this is basically their version of a quarterback sneak. Now, I don't know how this is technically quote unquote legal because this quarterback's in motion towards the line of scrimmage as the ball is snapped and he's not the one catching the ball. So I, I'm, not a, I'm not a rules analyst, nor am I one to bitch moan and complain about rules, but that don't really make no sense to me how somebody can walk towards the line of scrimmage on a fourth and one as a motion. This ain't the Canadian Football League. I don't understand why he gets to walk towards the line of scrimmage and everybody else don't. Um, but that's weird, okay? But that is their version of a quarterback sneak, and you're going to give that up. Fourth and an inch, probably, okay? You got to get these guys in fourth and twos, fourth and threes, then they're punting the football. You give them fourth and an inch, it don't matter if they're on their own 10, they might, they're, they're liable to go for it under uh, Lane Kiffin, okay? This is a freshman right here, guys. This is a freshman. He's finna get counter pull action, okay? He's finna get counter from the backside, okay? Watch this. Boom, or excuse me, power. Here comes this big old left tackle, okay? Right up inside, all right? Here comes 33. What the? Okay, sticks him, and here's my favorite part. Watch this. He knows. Look at him. He look at him down on the ground and watch this one. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We fit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm here for this. I'm here for this type of action. This is what my life is now about because I am C.J. Allen. I'm starting linebacker at the University of Georgia as a 19-year-old, 18-year-old freshman, however old you are. <laughs> Just stick right there in the hole, a six foot five, 330 pounder, and then let him know. Yep. Mm hmm. My granddad always used to make me laugh. He said, Hey, you, you, you got to let him know. First time you knock him down, you let him know. I will be here all night. <laughs> I'm going to be here all night. All right, here we go. That is not a freshman. Not one playing like a freshman, right? Hey, two NFL players fitting to go at it right here. Two NFL players fitting to go at it right here. Smile, Mondon. And uh, uh, Judkins right here, rushing to the point. Uh, okay, we got to make this tackle. We got to make this tackle too. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. Tr uh, sprint action, sprint toss action, right? Boom. Got to make that one. Got to make that one. Okay, it's the Hezzy that gets him too. Okay, right there from Judkins. All right, got to get him down on the ground, smile. Got to get him down on the ground. Everybody else got to get that dude down on the ground. But here, here, here you see what's happening, man. They're actually having some type of rushing success to start the football game, kind of having to do it in every facet, right? Trying to have to, kind of having to throw every little bit of their bag at them to start this football game, okay? Now, here's what I'm talking about from a green dog perspective. All right, that's the quarterback run. Not really necessarily worried about that. Here's the second and six I'm talking about. Watch two right here, okay? The, what, the, compare this mentally between what we just watched with Jalen Walker and what we're about to watch with number two. Watch how quickly and decisively he says, oh, no, I'm, I'm adding right now. I'm coming. Watch this. Okay? Pop, pop, pop. Boom. Now, I'm gone. And I'm gonna immediately going to close this space, and I'm now going to get a quarterback pressure. All right? Watch this from the replay. By the way, the dude's the GOAT for a reason. Kirk Herbstreit called a phenomenal game Saturday. I didn't think anyone I, – I don't think anyone's ever known this football be team better than the way he had analyzed them live on Saturday. Just with the way he, he – he obviously knew everything about the football team. He didn't miss on anything. It was nuts. He covers everybody. But anyways, back to smile. Watch him just for a second. Watch him kind of hesitate. Hesitate. All right, I'm here. I'm here. All right, nah. The back's done checked out. I got a two-way go. I'm either here or I'm here. He's a right-handed quarterback. I'm definitely there. Bam. Right? No way 
to give him any type of, oh, maybe I can go left, maybe I, no, right now, close the space immediately. Great job, too. Great job, too. Going to 316, I wonder what the coaching point was right here uh, for number 11, down here on the bottom, okay? Watch him. Boom, jumps inside. Now, I don't know if this was a stunt. I, we, we talked all week about rushing this guy with integrity, right? Rushing him with uh, discipline, making sure we rush with proper lane integrity, all this good stuff. Rushing scramblers like this is almost like covering kickoffs. We want to stay in our lane, essentially. We want to push the pocket, that kind of stuff. So I don't know if they told 11 to jump inside here. I don't know if he had an opportunity to jump inside here. We don't know because we're not in the room. But what I can tell you is 97, uh, you know, injured his calf strain that he was bothering uh, or having it bother him uh, leading up to this football game right there. So you're out of defensive tackle the rest of the football game from here on moving forward. We can get a replay of it right here. See, boom, jumps inside right there. Now, I, I, maybe that's a gamble they're taking, right? If I go back and look at the sticks, third and six, right? That's a gamble they're taking right here on third and six, perhaps as a defense. Jalen, not a, a, a type of football player to play outside of his rule book or outside of his responsibilities um, to this date at least, okay? So there you go. You give up a third down right there on to the next play, okay? Now they're going to attack number five. Okay, now they're going to attack number five, the other freshman that's in the, that's in the game. And we're going to get plenty of replays at this, so I'm going to kind of try to coach this up at the same time. Now, he's getting essentially FIB, right, what we call flood into the boundary, right? He's getting a bunch of vertical concepts from here, all right, and then the out and up from the tight end. And then eventually, he's going to get a flat presence from the running back as well. So a whole bunch of options over here. So now, as a defender, the first thing we have to do is sink. As we get pressed vertically, we have to carry, carry, carry. So let's see if he carries, all right, with this tight end as the tight end presses into the void. Oh, we see a little half of a back pedal and then a settle. We can't ever really settle. As, honestly, as he gets older, I would imagine you see him be smart enough to turn and run right now, to understand timing of concepts. As we get older, as, as we get more experience as football players, we understand not only what we're supposed to be doing as defensive players, but also what the offense is trying to do to us, right? Because they know you're a hook flat defender. Excuse me. They know you're a flat defender out there. They're trying to make you vulnerable, right? They're trying to push one and push two into your void. You're better off turning and running with the, uh, with the, with the vertical, right? And allowing, I don't know, our All-American safety to, to pursue out that running back if that's where they ultimately end up going, okay? So just, you know, again, what were the corrections? The corrections were don't allow 40-yard explosives. Don't around 40 yard explosives because this is one right here that ultimately gives up seven points. Okay. Again, Kirk doing a tremendous job. Like, I, I, there's nobody better at his job than what he does. I mean, he, I mean, he just do it. I mean, why even do it? Why not just go, why, why even do the film study? Why not just go back and watch the TV broadcast? Hopefully, Kirk can pick it all up live on television. Here we go. Don't think I want this one. I want 445. I want this one right here. Okay. All right, watch the right tackle. Okay, this is the, the first of uh, two touchdown runs on consecutive plays. Now, there comes the flag. All right, there comes the flag running through your field of view. All right, and there is one Kirby Paul Smart doing this right here. He's saying, hold, and then he's saying, back your ass on up. That's what he's doing right there. Look at that. And guess where he's looking? He's looking directly at that old Miss sideline. Everybody sees that, right? We all see that. Okay, here we go. All right, on to the next play. Because you know what happens the next play. They get the offensive hold called. They back it up, yada, yada, yada. They show us the replay. 78, damn near close lines. Chaz Chambliss. Okay, all the good stuff. Get a hold call coming back. All right, there's Lane. We see Lane. He just got a little shit talk from Kirby on the other side. All right, let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. Here comes the next play. The next play is an off-tackle touchdown to Quinshawn Juckins. We'll coach it up here in a second because we got more to talk about, about this little banter here. Oh, 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 there he is. Look at here. Guess what he's doing? He's looking at Kirby saying, where's the hole now? And then gives him one of them. Boom, mother effers. I love that these two dudes are like best friends. They talk about being best friends. They fight, compete, and talk shit like brothers. I love that. I, I find that enjoyable. I find that fun. Uh, and when the game was close, you could feel that energy on both sidelines from both football coaches. Now, let's actually coach what happened here. Um, I think you got a crack replace way better than this 
six. Okay, as soon as the corner comes in or the wide receiver comes in, hey, we got to go. We got to close space right now. Got to come downhill. Again, Kirk doing the clicker. Why even do my job this week, Kirk? Come on, man. Why even do my job this week, man? Where we at next week? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Oh, we're flipping up the offense. Here we go. Let's talk about it. Hey, this was funny as well. Uh, I was talking to that old, one of the Ole Miss coaches, and he was like, man, we had to convert two fourth downs. We had, I mean, we, we had to get some help. You know, we were, we were boom, 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 and we were juiced to score that first touchdown. And then we get over to the, uh, our sideline, we look up, and their first play is a uh, uh, duo off tackle or inside zone off tackle. And they're just like, okay, um, well, that was really easy for them. <laughs> they just walked the ball. And uh, they're not just walking it. They're earning it. All right, you get a good kick out block right there from 71. Good inside hand pressure. But here's the key, right? The key is from 63 and 53 up to what we call the mic, mic ID, right? Mike 11, Mike 11. We're getting our cog, our center, and our offensive guard combination block up to that front side inside linebacker. That's a great job there from 63. One more uh, and 53. One more look at it right here. Boom. There you see the combo. Four hands on the down lineman, or excuse me, three hands on the down lineman, and then boom. Dylan Fairchild getting up to the secondary linebacker and getting a good hand shock on him. Now, we just got to continue to run our feet, 53, and go finish that block, keeping our hands inside. Now, as this offense continues to mold together, as they continue to play together, as they continue to do all these things together, they're going to have even more options and even more answers to what you're doing like this right here. Down on the bottom, as Rob Rod Thomas is running and pressing vertically, He's seeing this corner is in straight up bail technique. So what he's going to do is he's going to boom. He's going to sit it down immediately. And the ball's already out, guys. The ball's been out. The ball's been out way earlier because Carson's seeing the same thing. The ball is out now. Rob Rod Thomas is just now starting his break, okay? These two guys are really, really starting to work in sync, and that's the difference. If that ball's a hair late, Kirby said today, a half a second is a lifetime in, in the game of football. If that, if that ball's a quarter second late, that defensive back right there probably gets in the mix and gets into the picture. So these guys are continuing to build continuity, and that's scary for an offense that's been putting up like basically 300 yards a game through the air throughout the year this year. Okay? So if you're playing Georgia this year, just understand they're going to be throwing that thing. They're going to be throwing that thing really, really well. Look how consistent this dude's base is, man. This is why he's so accurate. All right, for once, Ole Miss actually plays man coverage, which thanks to Bobo motioning out the back immediately, giving us a tear motion off the, off the snap, right? Carson sees that. He sees the linebacker start to bail immediately, sees shoulder square, shoulder square, shoulder square. So if we have man-to-man -man defense, where are we going to attack, class? That's right. We're going to look to start to attack to 84 and to 19, 19 side. Why? Because they're our best football players. So let's try to get them the football. All right, let's watch Carson's progression here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see where he starts. Well, first thing he's going to do is hold the middle field safety. I love that. Stare him right down in the eyes. Make sure he can't move, right? Got no decision. Then we're going to work to our left. We're going to peek to our left. We don't like it. Now we're going to come all the way back to the right with our feet and our base consistent the entire time. Look at his feet, guys. Boom, boom. Look at his feet, guys, on the next read. Boom, boom, right? His feet and his spacing between his feet, right? His base. His base is consistent throughout every single rep. It's, it's something that you really only see through, like, years and years of processing reads because this is hard to do, man. You're going to open up to your left side and then work all the way back to your right, maintaining the same exact base. Watch this. Boom. Eyes on this left safety. Okay, we're going to keep our shoulders square, though. All right, boom. Now we're going to open up. Hips and everything to lab. We don't necessarily like it. Now we're going to check down to Brock. We don't necessarily like it. We're going to keep our base, keep our base. Okay, now we're scanning the field backwards. We don't even like Dominic Lovett here. Boom, now we're going to come all the way back to our fourth read, and we're going to hit a dig all the way on that backside. You know what that looked like? It looked like a exact same clip we showed you several years ago, or two years ago, rather, of him in mop-up duty doing the same exact thing to the inverse side, throwing a touchdown uh, to his left side to Dylan Bell. Okay, the dude is dialed. The dude is dialed at all times. On to this next clip, what we got? Let's see here. Got the motion from Dom Lovett. Oh, oh, competitive football into tight coverage. I love this, man. All right, so they're trying to go a little Fox screen, right? Trying to hit the, the stutter, all right? Show the, the bubble screen, and then we're going to hit this slot fade right here and this, this slant right here from uh, Dylan Bell. So we're really attacking 
this matchup between Ladd and this nickel defender who's now got to process, hey, is it screen or am I getting wheeled right here from Ladd McConkie? He's ultimately getting wheeled, and he does a great job. He's right there in the spot. But here's what, man, this is Sunday stuff right here, and here's why. Because when you get to Sunday, man, everybody's going to be kind of covered like this. Okay, everybody covers really, really well in the league. I know, I know that's shocking, but those guys get paid well too. So if you can manage to continue to do that, if even when dudes are draped, they're right there on, like in their grill, the defense has played perfect defense. They've coached up our beater, right? They've, they've sought it out. If you can still put us within an inch of a 50-50 ball, bro, you're going you to play forever. You're going to play forever because your offense is always going to be competitive and threatening, Right? It's a competitive NFL football against competitive NFL coverage. Where are we going here? Oh, he knows pre-snap. He knows pre-snap. All right. I got, uh, I think, Oscar on a vertical. I've got Ladd on a spot. All right. And I've got the arrow right out of the backfield. If that's the combination, guys, just off pre-snap read alone, second and 10. All right. What do you think he knows? He knows right now I'm hitting this arrow. And he's never going to wait on it. And it's, and it's sometimes going to feel really, really boring. Until you look up in the stat sheet and you say, shit, he's 12 for 13. He's 12 for 13 for 274 yards in the first half. Why? Well, because he knows pre-snap, everything they're showing, if they do that post-snap, just take it right now. Just take it right now. And then let Kendall Milton do this. Because I love, I mean, seeing this back from this guy, it's incredible, man. I'm so, I'm so glad we got to see this version of him. Okay, this I'm impossible to tackle version of Kendall Milton, okay, before his senior year ended up. This is tremendous stuff from two. He had a tremendous game on, on everything that he did, not just catching the football out of the backfield, not just being tough to block, but he's always been tremendous in pass protection as well, okay? Where are we going next? We're going to 851. Now, the thing, here, here's the deal. You can't do stuff like this. You can't have the offensive coordinator be in his, quote, bag, Right? You can't have Mike Bobo be in his bag unless you stay on script. Right? Unless on second and ten, if we, if we take the check down that ends up into a first down or ends up into a, a, a second and three, then our offensive coordinator still has the whole playbook to himself. But if we sit there on second and ten, right? if we sit there on that last snap and we hold the football and we don't, we're, we're not like, you know, di disciplined about our reads and we're not, you know, if you, without a better term or, or, you know, for lack of a better term, if we're not boring, if we're not just like, ooh, Charlie check down. Sometimes we don't allow our coordinator to be as fun and as outgoing as he possibly wants to be because we're always off schedule. We're always off script or behind the sticks. When you have a quarterback that's always making right decisions, always getting the ball out of his hand on time, right, and, and, and doing the things that the defense allows him to do, you're going to be able to do stuff like this, like jump in 21 personnel, okay, put Kendall Milton in the backfield, and then run toss crack, okay? Fun stuff right there from the offense. Great job right there from four. As soon as I saw this flat motion, I was screaming toss crack from the booth. But the next time they do it, they'll just slip him right across or something. And you can't, you can't just, so it's the thing about having a balanced offense like this. You can't, can't just take one thing away because they just, they do all different kinds of stuff to you. What we got here? Great concept here from Ole Miss. Okay, now, I'm not the best at describing what defense is, all right? I played offense in high school and in college. Okay, but when I see this, what am I showing you? Showing you my palms, right? Okay, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking palms coverage right here, which means number six has to run with anything that comes out vertically, right? So they're, they're in a bunched formation here. So number six, whose butt is to the sideline, he's going to have to run with that, right? He's going to have to run with that as long as we run something here as well, okay? So not only are we attacking number six, the guy we want to attack, but we're attacking his leverage as well as an offense, okay? Y'all saw that as he ran out of your screen. Watch six being trail technique on the guy's butt because he's forced to, okay? Boom, there he is. Okay, now he's got to carry vertically with this guy pushing, all right, vertically, but he's going to break off and run towards Ole Miss's sideline here in just a second. Again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and defend him over and over and over and over again, but understand that he's not just giving up basic-ass stuff, 
All right, he gives up a double move later that Javon Bullard ends up picking off. But, you know, guess what I can do if I have safety help? I can jump inside on a slant because I know I got safety help. That kind of thing. This is the C.J. Allen drive right here. 33 covers ground more effortlessly than others. Watch him. Watch him right here. He looks like he's jogging the whole time. He meets mans at the line of scrimmage, okay? The whole entire time, he never looks like he's in full sprint speed, okay? He looks like he's jogging to me, like taking a Sunday stroll, all right? And then cons uh, constantly pursues it with the proper leverage inside out and helps make this tackle along with Kamari Lasseter out on the edge, all right? Then this very next play, they run stretch to the field, all right? Stretch to the field, and guess what? We don't quite pursue it well enough, all right? We don't quite pursue it well enough. We don't get over the top of that, all right? And then here comes the next play. The next play, I believe, is the beater. No, the next play is another run play. Tough assignment there for, uh, for Tyke Smith to have to jump in there and plug that, all right? Really, really tough assignment right there, okay? On third and two. Especially when you know they're going for it on fourth down. What? Y'all keep watching. Kamari Lasseter, you daggum first rounder. You daggum first rounder. You daggum first rounder. This dude's so good. He almost made this pick right here. Eyes on the ball the whole entire time. Never once. Never once. Once he gets to this point right here, watch him look for the ball. He's looking before the, the wide receiver is because he knows I better find that football and I better go make a play on that thing. Uh. He's so daggum good. So dadgum good. 11.03. This next snap I thought was really, really impressive. Okay, you're going to get a very, very late stem right here for Georgia's defense. There you see it. Boom. Now, as the camera flips just now, they're running a, a, a play. The ball has been snapped. Now, they're going to, in the middle of this, you know, pre-snap stem, they're now going to immediately stunt without ever getting back into their stances. So watch all the movement from the big guys. Boom. TID is going to snap right back inside. Okay. And smile, or uh, excuse me, Nazir Stackhouse is going to continue his slant outwards. There you see the run game stunt. So I'm, I'm just envisioning, okay, other defensive coordinators saying, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to stem right before the snap. All right, sounds like a great idea, coach. Um, how do we make sure our defensive linemen, who are all 300 pounds plus, how do we make sure that we're still good enough athletes to work side to side in case, I don't know, we play a wide zone football team uh, and we want to be able to run some type of game stunts? Well, I don't know, make sure they're super athletic. That's it. That's all, that's all you can do. And guess who has them? Georgia has them. I'd say Alabama has them. And that's about it, right? That's about it, okay? I'm just, again, man, take your butt outside, get in a four-point stance. Do it. I want to see some. Somebody take a video of this. Take a four-point stance, all right, and I want you to immediately have your wife or your sister or your brother, somebody go, move. And then as soon as they do that, you got to jump and move over a full gap, all right, and then on the snap, you got to do that and then immediately slant back towards your left. Show me. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. We get a replay of it here in a second, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, watch, boom. And then immediately at the snap, ready to play. Ready to play. Even the plays that my man gives up, even the plays that Kamari's giving up right now in terms of completions, I mean, dude's a strap. He's just out there playing that as good as you possibly can uh, and giving up a slight reception right there to Trey Harris, who's an NFL football player, right? A guy who's got 750 yards this year. Hmm. Hold on, I, we got to go back. I got to show y'all something because it'll pop up later in the film study. I missed a note. Um, look at this, okay? This is the, the same defense they're going to show when they make a pick later. All right, here you go. Check this out. One, two, three safeties. That's Tyke in the middle of the field, number 23. That's number 22, Javon Bullard. And that's obviously number 24, Malachi Starks. All right, everybody sees that. Um, what did I miss on the notes here? Just in terms of... Um, other than that, I just I was supposed to show you that. Let's get on. 11.28. We already showed the blanket. All right. 11.52. This is, 
this is some crazy stuff right here. Um, Javon Bullard, I, I don't, I don't know. Like the the best, the best play everyone's going to remember him for in this football game is the interception. I, I'll remember this one because this is huge. Watch this, fourth and three. All right, Ole Miss is going to go to their best man beater here on fourth and three. They're going to uh, force a, a bunched release, a stacked release right here for number 11. They're going to run 86 vertically right here. They're going to run 86 vertically right here, and they're going to rub number 11 on the arrow immediately. All right, they're going to force 22 to not only sort through 86, but sort through his own football player, all right, and make this play. Now, watch how fast, watch how fast 22 sees this. All right, here he is, right here. Watch him slip, watch him slip right underneath Tyke, and then guess what? Boom. Now I got outside leverage on your little arrow route. Your little arrow route that is your primary read that everybody gets beat on, all right, I'm squatting on it. Why? Because I'm smart. I'm smart. I'm well coached. I'm extremely, uh, 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 what do you call it, instinctual when I'm out there playing football as well. I saw this on fourth and three and got thought, my God, watch how fast. Watch how fast he recognizes what happened. Okay? Boom. Jump in front Whew, right now. Fourth and three, get the hell off my field, right? Fourth and three, get off my field because Javon Bullard is a nuts man, is a nuts man. All right, we're going to spread. We're going to scatter to sp uh, trips left right here is what it looks like. I don't know if we're talking about this play on our next note, but we're going to hit it anyways. Oh, yeah, I know what we're going to do. We, we, we can't do this. We can't do this as a defense against Georgia. All right, we already got pretty much a short side. The safety's all the way back at 14 yards because we've been giving up air raid concepts all first half, it seems like. Uh, or all first, qu first quarter, it seems like. But what you can't do is you can't jump inside as a defensive end because these running backs are way too well coached. Okay, they're, well, they're way too well coached, and they understand that, boom, right now, you're cooked. And not only do they know that you're cooked on that front side because Amarius Mims is a first rounder, but they also know as a running back that I can't just sprint straight to it. Watch him. He's going he's gonna to take at least two steps vertically down the, uh, the, the uh, line of scrimmage, right, towards the line of scrimmage, and then he's going to bounce cut. Okay, to beat that angle right there from 36. Okay, so we can't be we can't be sacrificing edges out there in the run game against Georgia. Now, this right here, this is Georgia football, okay, in this offensive line. All right, these are two dudes working folks. All right. This is 63 and this is 69, and this is an explosive run because these two dudes are elite. All right. Watch the replay right here from this center and this uh, offensive guard right here, okay? He ends up circling Mims. I'm not that imp I, I am impressed by Mims being able to full scoop a, a four eye. But guess what, guys? We've been seeing that for years now. What I am impressed is these two's ability, okay, to sort out this run blitz that they end up getting from Ole Miss right here. Okay, look at the linebacker cross over the face, okay, of that defensive lineman, and watch 69. Watch him take over this defensive lineman. Boom. Okay, he wants to work back outside. That's fine. I'm just gonna turn my butt. And I'm going to squat and I'm going to seal. Now, 63, let's find the linebacker. Let's meet collision, right? And then let's finish. Boom. Beautiful hole opening up in backside A gap. All right. And we got a big explosive play. All because we sorted out that combo perfectly. There's a bunch of explosives in this football game due to that right there on the front side of the run play. Okay. And then they run uh, flood into the boundary on the next play for six. <coughs> This is not arguably been, this has been Georgia's most explosive play uh, since 2020, uh, flooding the boundary, okay? They're, they're gonna give it to you over and over again, okay? They got double seams here. They're gonna run up the flat or run up the sideline and then they're gonna hit the, uh, the check down in the flat out there. This is FIB, flood into the boundary, okay? And they run it a lot. They run it better, in my opinion, than probably anybody in college football. Because again, most of their explosives, most of their like, wow, how'd that guy get that open? FIB, 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 because this guy right here, 19. He's going to take a lot of eyes with him. Uh, he's got essentially the Steph Curry effect. We're going to talk about that if we haven't already. I don't even know where I'm at right now. Um, if we haven't already talked about it, we can talk about it right now. Kirk doing a great job here. 19 is always going to take eyes with him, okay? Always going to take eyes with him. So this front side safety, he's going to get drug, all right? And this corner who's got a cover three angle, Okay, or he's at least got deep quarters. They, they look like they're in quarters. Okay, if he's got deep quarters, all right, he's got that area of the field. Well, guess what? We're going to snap him off, all right, and we're going to bang that post right there to Lad McConkey as soon as it gets open. Ah, what are you doing, man? Get out of here. There you see it. Kurt with the clicker. 
Kirk with the clicker. Who gave Kirk a clicker? Kirk, if you're listening, uh, slow this thing down, man. Get you a slow-mo button on that clicker, like your boy right here. See, I got to slow it down for you. And then guess what? I can speed it up, too. All right, Kirk, you hear me? Get you a clicker with some, with some slow-mo in there. We know you got the budget. We know you got the budget. Um, watch this play right quick. Uh, actually, hold on. Number 33. My God, son. Watch this. Okay, we're gonna play the, We're gonna we're gonna close the run. Are right, we gonna close the gap? We're gonna shut it off front side. And then as the running back goes to retrace to the back side, watch this. We're gonna retrace too. And guess what? Wham! We're gonna meet him right there. All right, we're gonna run our feet. That's an NFL running back, guys. That's an NFL running back making NFL cuts. And watch 33. Close space. Close space. Close space. Shut it off. Oh, bounce, bounce, retread, stick. Uh, right there. I love that. This is the C.J. Allen drive, actually. All right. Let's go on to the next clip right here. You're going to see him. Hey, just get stretched just a little bit too much. We got to go. Right? Watch him. Watch him. Oh, boom. We got to make that tackle. Just like we told Smile, he's got to make that tackle. We got to make that tackle. 233. Probably take a better angle. Better angle. Maybe we could key just a tad bit early. All right. And then guess what? The very next play. Okay. The very next play right here. I'm pretty sure it is. Let me see. Okay. Then he's patient on stretch. I'm pretty sure. No, this is the play action. Okay, this is the bet. This is the best thing they have. All right, they got this safety down over here. They got this safety lone in the middle of the field. They're gonna run two at him. Okay, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to force a switch on CJ to have to make him turn and run down the middle of the field on their best player or their best slot weapon. Excuse me, their best explosive player down the middle of the field. Wham! And they end up getting him. All right. But it's a perfect football. Like, if you see him right here, watch, watch the responsibilities that 33's got right here. Watch this, okay? I got to get my eyes on immediately, and now I got to turn and run with their fastest football player down the middle of the field. Like, come on. And, yeah, he got beat. He did, but he was right there. He was right there. Most people get beat by that play, by the way, and they forced a perfect football. Now, the very next snap, okay, last time got, uh, wasn't aggressive enough. On the, on the spread option to him, or excuse me, the, uh, the spread run to him, right? Uh, stretch run. All right, now we're going to get all the way outside. We're going to be nice and patient. Look at this, okay? We're going to be nice and patient. Then we're going to split the difference as soon as we find it. We're going to get flat and make a play. Shouts out to Smile Mondon for pursuing like a banshee on the, from the backside. Shouts out to Nazir Stackhouse, all involved, fighting off a hold. Everybody doing a great job right there. But hell yeah, 33. Way to respond from a big play happening to you right behind your head top. Okay. Hey, 12, let's talk about you right quick. Okay, this is the PI on you. Um, first of all, I hope your shoulder injury heals up real quickly. Okay, but once our eyes, once our eyes are on the ball, okay, right here, get your hands off of him. Get your hands off. Now, I think your hand's on him because you're tripping and you're falling and he's helping you balance. But as soon as we turn and locate football, which probably should have been a little bit earlier, he's got his eyes up for the football right now. Let's have an internal clock like Kamari had just a little bit a while ago. All right. Get your head around a little bit earlier. You might be able to make a play on the football before y'all's feet start to tangle up. Okay. We're on a 1540. Man, I'm going to tell you what. Kirby said he's playing some of his best football right now. Uh, I, I would attest that uh, he's playing some great football, and that's number 13. Uh, and, and it's hard to see because he's playing that position at Georgia that you don't really see unless you're watching it really, really closely or, or unless, you know, he's making big-time plays on Saturday in the backfield, all right? But most of the time, it's just simple stuff like this that's actually shutting down the entire play. Watch number 13 right here. Watch him shock and shed number 63 right here, or 67. Just absolutely putting him in the backfield. You got, you got an office alignment doing this, getting walked backwards on a run play. Come on, son. Yes, sir. And then the, guess what it is from here on out? From here on out, from this moment right here, when this angle is now, or this uh, alleyway is shut off, from this moment forward, it's a pursuit drill. It's who's fastest to the point. And guess what, guys? You ain't never going to win that. You ain't never going to win that against Georgia. Them boys fly to the football. This was the play that Julian Humphrey got hurt on. You can definitely tell it is a left shoulder injury. Okay, whether or not he's dislocated or what I broke, I don't know. We didn't get an answer from Kirby today on that one. Okay. 
Hmm. I wonder why they didn't come back to this. Second and 11, they run quarterback counter, okay? Um, I, I expected them to, you know, eventually come back to this somehow because Georgia gave them this bare front look quite a bit on Saturday. Um, and this was, I thought this was available to them. This is full on quarterback counter um, and, and they get nine or 10 yards on it. And honestly, there's not much they can do defensively except for be better at the front, right? Be better at the point because watch what happens to CJ Allen. He's got the back, I would assume, because he sure as shit is running with him, okay? And then you got the action to the front side. I don't think we get a replay of it, so you just got to trust me on that one. Probably a multitude of ways that you could play that better, um, whether it be the down block from the right tackle on 44, whether it be the dent from seven could be a little bit better. Uh, you know, 13 almost catches him from the backside there. There's a lot there that could be done slightly better. Excuse me, two almost catches him from the backside right there as well. Okay, but I, I was just shocked. I was shocked they didn't come back to it. I wonder why they didn't. Because it was available, I thought. Let's go to 1731. I, another, I'm shocked. It's third and goal right here. There's obvious signs of confusion. Like, well, the fact that they didn't take a timeout right here is not, I, I understand what you're doing. We're going to talk about the two minute here in a second. I understand what you're doing in two minute. You are, you are historically a defensive minded coach, but this right here, having 12 guys on the field, being confused. Now, I know they gave you. What is a, I mean, it's like a, a one seven, it's like a 17 person, like a 71 personnel. You got offensive linemen over here. One, two, three, four, five, six offensive linemen on the line of scrimmage and three tight ends plus a fat one. Okay. And then and an offensive line, like, or a running back, like y'all got a bunch of dudes on the field and y'all must huddle. So I understand the confusion. Just tee it up, man. Just tee it up because your defense has no chance of actually being able to defend this type of play or any type of play, really, when everybody's kind of like, confused and you got 12 guys on the field this is very rare to see from a georgia all or from a georgia defense i was surprised i didn't see a penalty or a, a timeout right there that was the only one like i said i can i can understand the, the two minute drill here in a minute because like you know he's always protecting defense everybody wants to talk about the explosives from kendall those are great those are awesome but guys th this is it like this, if, if, if and when he plays for a long time on Sundays, it's going to be because of this right here. He got hit at the line of scrimmage. Watch where this play ends up. It's an eight-yard gain. Okay, when we can take, uh, didn't make everything perfect plays, and we can turn them into eight, nine-yard gains, however we do that, whether it's because we made the first defender miss or whether it's because we ran seven yards through an arm tackle, however we can make our friends around us right and make their jobs positive, uh, that, that, that's us doing our job as an offense, or as, or as a running back, rather, okay? Hey, I see you right here, 71. I see, I also see you, offense, because guess what? If they're going to play what is a three-tech here and no defensive lineman on the line of scrimmage and the closest free hat for our tackle to actually block is the corner up there, okay, well, guess what? We're going to call a combination block. We're going to call a cog up to the mic. We're going to call Mike 11, I believe that is. And we're going to get this thing daggum licked, son. And that's exactly what happens. Watch this. Okay. Down set hut. There goes 63 and 77. Boom. Up to the Mike linebacker. There goes 71 onto the corner. And all of a sudden, you got seven yards. Well, yeah. Yeah, you got seven yards because you got nobody over there. Right? You got nobody over there. Now, part of that is because they're in quads. Tight end, three receivers and the running back on the right. So everything from, a, uh, from an alignment standpoint tells us we should be working to our right, all right? And they run back to the left. But I see you, 71. I see you. I see you fighting to finish, okay? A couple of weeks ago, this is just a, a play where we just kind of pushed the guy at the end. Uh, now we're big daddying. Now we're big daddying over there, right? Now we're, it's the big show. We're over there walking legs on them. Walk them down. Here we go. More Steph Curry effect from number 19. Watch this. Watch him on the, on, on the arrow screen right here. That's what Ole Miss thinks they're getting. Boom. Okay. Again, why am I doing my job this week? I don't know. You could have probably just watched the television broadcast, um, but only when Kirk's doing it. So when Kirk's doing it, y'all have freedom to take the week off from the network. Okay, because y'all just watch the game, and man's going to get you. Watch this. Watch this on the replay. This is live. Man's is, and look, this is how this works, okay? He gets the play in front of him. 
He looks down at his monitor. He gets the replay before you get the replay. That's it. And this is how quickly he's identifying all this. The guy is goaded, man. The guy is goaded. But, yeah, the offensive schemes are goaded, too. They're really, really hard to stop, guys. Okay? They're really hard to stop. Hell yeah, 9-19, and 19, or 19-65. and 65. Okay, we're going to motion Brock in, all right? And there you see 65 pointing out. They're pointing out saying, hey, we got a tray, right? Tackle and tight end. We got a tray from number four to number five, okay? Us two are responsible for these two, and they're running right up our butt, 19, so we better get it done, all right? Look at the movement here. That's it, right? Also, look at the athleticism from 65, all right? We're going to get a tremendous amount of movement, Okay, we're going to fall off of our block. Wish that wouldn't have happened. That sucks. But here comes the running back. Woo! We're going to get over that. All right, at six foot eight, 315 pounds, 330 pounds, whatever he weighs. Okay. He's a special dude, man. He is a special dude, number 19 is. Okay. This is uh, one of them arrow screens, one of them look at me's. All right, we're going to jump off, make a guy miss, get eight yards. It's like... How do you block it? How do you stop it? You don't. Okay. I thought, so it's his left leg, right? There's the right cut, and boom, he lands on one foot on his left leg. Kirby said today, probably not at 100%, um, but definitely working to get himself back into that shape and into that, that, that spot. Definitely conditioned more than most. Boom, right on that left foot, guys. That was the one he rolled uh, and had surgery on against Vanderbilt. Okay. Get another look at it right there. Get a look at what late versus underthrown looks like right here. This is the double move to Ladd McConkey uh, from Carson. Thought again, Kirk did a great job here of explaining that this ball was just a little bit late. It was not necessarily underthrown. Guys, we don't put this ball is thrown from the 47 to the 10 yard line. It's a 50 yard throw when you account for me throwing it from the middle of the field to the right hash. We don't put 50-yard throws in the playbook. We put 45 runners into the playbook, right? We put 40-yard throws into the playbook to hit guys in stride. The concepts are supposed to be hit uh, much earlier in the field of play. Um, but you can see that this ball's held just a little bit too long. Ball probably should have came out a little bit earlier, all right? And that's okay because Ladd was that wide open. Also could have been what was happening. Maybe Carson just didn't want to overthrow him. All right, when you're that wide open, sometimes as a quarterback, it can be a little nerve-wracking. It sounds silly, but when, when you're naked out there, it, it makes me like, I, I, I don't want to just absolutely just chunk this thing because if I overthrow you, we definitely lose. If I underthrow you, we might get a PI, worst case, right? Great job from Lab, man. His ability to sink his weight right here. Boom. That right there, and then to get back up speed and go. Now, here's the thing about him. He's always been just, uh, able to, from a stop, get going fast. But I don't know if he was always able to stop this quickly, all right, before college. You know what I mean? Like, he wasn't this clean in his technique and in, in his ability to drop his weight. Kirby knows right now, hey, we might have six. So if you're looking for development in a player, I would say it's right about there, right? His ability to stop and, and, and go. He's always had to go, but his ability to stop and go is relatively new, okay? We got some run plays here. Congratulations. Let's get back to more offensive plays. From there on out, the defense pretty much shuts them out. All right, let's keep going. 22-42 right here. Man, so you're telling me not only at this point, like, the dude terrifies defenses going deep. Uh, another sign of he's 100% or he's, you know, himself, his ability to stop on a vertical like this, they're going to run him right here and just squat him immediately once he notices zone coverage. All right, watch this. Boom. Just immediately stop down, and he's wide open. Okay? Wide, wide open. He earned it. Okay? Earned it. Good timing there from Carson as well. Okay? That's cutting off the right foot, turning on the left foot. But, again, if you're going to tell me, he, he, like, all of a sudden now, we got a dude out here that's not only – I mean, what do you do? He, he, can, he can do that against you, right? He can do this against you. Okay, he, and now, now he can stop against you? Like, how do we cover him? Because we damn sure can't play man against him, right? There's no real options for a defense when he's out there on the field. 
I talked about this one last week. It's just a little bit too easy. That's a false start. That's the run play. This is the second and 13. It's just a little bit too easy for a quarterback like Carson if you're going to give him this read, right? If you're going to show him pressure, if you're going to show him what looks to be quarters, okay? Guess what he knows right now? He knows right now I have the running back in the flat. If that's actually what they bring, boom, ball's out right now. Like We have no reason to hesitate. We have no reason to second guess because we're going to force this right here. We're going to force their defensive end and our running back with seven yards of mess around space, okay, in between them, okay, to let something happen. And that's exactly what happens. He ends up picking up a first down, okay? Anytime you give us that, as a quarterback who is disciplined in his reads, he's just going to take it. That's exactly what Kirk's telling you right now, okay? We'll let him show you through the replay. No need to draw for me. Now, when you play on script like this, guess what? Again, like we told you earlier, when you're on script as a quarterback, when you're always ahead of the chains, your, co your coordinator can really have fun. He can sit back there and he'll be like, all right, we finna, ooh, we finna cook. I can get in my bag, right? I got a quarterback that's always going to have us playing ahead of the sticks. So here on first and 10, ball at the 32, already scored 21 points the first half. We're going to try to go for the throat right now. And guess what? He's not going to put the ball at risk if it's not there. He's just going to run on out of bounds and get us seven free yards. Playing ahead of the sticks pays the bills, man. It pays the bills. Man, Kendall Milton. Oh, this isn't Kendall Milton. This is Kendall Milton. Okay, this is it right here, guys. Third and two, okay? Hit right there at the first down stick, and we're just going to keep running. We're just going to keep grinding, right? Guess what? We're going to give him right. We're going to give it right back to him. We're going to get right back on the ball. Okay, we're going to, we're going to shift the, the linebacker out. Actually, we're, we're going to throw the screen out there to lad. But here comes the next play I'm talking about right here. We're going to give it right back to Kendall. All right, leg arm tackled right there at the line of scrimmage. Nah, dog. We're going to jump right through that one, and boom, we're going to go pick up a first down. Again, the explosives are great. They're awesome. All right, there are a lot of credit due to the offensive line. This is what gets guys drafted and gets guys paid, and he did this a lot Saturday. All right, breaking through arm tackles, making guys miss, running over dudes, playing physical, and guess what? They know. They know a hot hand when they see one. They give it right back to him right here on first and goal, and he runs through an MFer's face right here. Boom. Ugh. Just my God. All right? There's a lot going on right here. All right, 13 trying to punch the ball out, 25 on his legs. He's just running through everything right now. Ugh. And then jumping. The, the, this was explosive as hell. The ability right here to just, oh, whoop, little box jump. Y'all ever do those bounding box jumps when you were a kid or when you were training, right? You're on a box, you jump down onto the ground, and you immediately jump back up. This is it right here. Boom. That's a little explosive box jump right there for number two. Watch it. Right there. Whoa. All right. Let's go to the actual interception of the day. Second and four, where's it at? That's not it. That's not it. Great play there. This is it right here. All right, here's that three safety look again. Tyke in the middle, Bullard on the hash, Malachi Starks in between the numbers and the hash on the other side. All right, they're trying to run. I think we'll just let the play run instead of trying to be uh, visually, uh, you know, someone who remembers absolutely everything we took a note on today. You psycho. Motion into empty right here. All right. And Bullard immediately rolls towards the middle of the field, gets his hips back square, and floats back over and makes his interception. Now, here's what I want to talk about right here. And this is something that it, it takes a lot of training. And I, I don't know who Bullard trains with, but I know a guy who trains this really, really well. His name's Oliver Davis. And every single time I go to one of his workouts, he coaches the piss out of this. So many times you'll see this, this zone drop where this guy will drop and then he'll get his shoulder square, right? And then, okay, here comes the double move this way. We know it's happening. So many times guys will run to this spot with their eyes on the quarterback. And guess what? It's really, really hard to do. It's really hard to run as fast as possible with our eyes on the ball and the quarterback. So we have to trust ourselves. We have to get our eyes on where we're going. We have to tuck our head, run really, really fast, get to the spot, and then put our eyes back on the ball and go make a play on the football. This is textbook, guys. Watch. All right. You can see him. Now he's got his eyes back on the ball, but let's roll it back just a little bit. Right there, boom. He puts his eyes on where he's got to go. He turns his shoulders, runs to it, all right, looks back down again, gets a couple more steps at it, all right, and then goes and high points the football. Kirby also said this was something they coached him up on this week, something that he had to improve on, 
all right, and something that they were, uh, you know, mad about his performance because he gave this up a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, uh, in a different look. Now, let's talk about the corner, all right. The corner jumping in on, on a slant, not great, all right, but he does have safety help over the top. That's what I talked about to start the show, all right. Um, but I, I, you should know Six is going to get hunted. Six knows he's going to get hunted because he knows the other guy's really, really good. It's not that he's not good. It's that the other guy's really, really great. All right, so when they watch the film, they see teams attacking him, and they're like, oh, wow, we can do that. Well, you might be able to, but they got two of the best safeties roaming the deep fields that there is in college football. Hey, I appreciate you guys so much for being here today, man. Uh, however, wherever you found us, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, like, subscribe, and rate, review. And if you liked what you saw, okay, we got a live show coming up at 8 o'clock starting immediately. All right, so make sure you're showing up for that one. Hitting thumbs up, like, subscribe, rate, review. And we will see you in a little bit. Ooh, 55 minutes? Ooh!